Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up React Native on your Mac for your Android device. So to develop for Android, if you want to know how to do this for iOS, I'll have a separate video for that, all the setup, everything that you need to know. I'll have separate videos for like Windows and Linux, for Android as well, and for web, and I'll do like a video for like doing like all of the different, you know, development platforms in one so now that you you're ready open up your browser you want to search for homebrew go to the website straight away and go to brew.sh you want to install this you want to click copy i'm going to open up terminal and i've already got it open but you will just go to search terminal or go to applications and open it up from there and so right click new window for me i'm going to zoom in because I've learned that a lot of the viewers, they watch my programming tutorials on their phone. Even though they're going to be doing it on their you know, computer, they watch it on the phone. So, got to accommodate. Right click, paste, click enter. You ask you for your password. It will not appear, not even in secured asterisk form. Just press enter again, you know, once you press enter for the password. But it is typing. It's the password that you use for your user login on your computer. You might automatically, you know, sign in, but it's that, you know, password that you use, not your Apple account. So bear that in mind, not your Apple account. It's the one for your Mac. And now that you've got this installed, this is a, you know, a package manager for Mac. It allows you to install packages. We're going to first install Node. You do that by putting in brew space install space node, press enter. This is what will allow us to use stuff like NPX, which is a package manager as well. It allows us to, you know, set up, well, you know, run JavaScript scripts. And, you know, we'll be using, you'll be using this throughout your React, you know, development. You're, you're putting brew install watchman. This just keeps track of file changes. Again, I've already got installed, but for you, it'll take a lot longer to be downloaded and installing, so just bear, the, bear that in mind. Next, we need to install the Java Development Kit. To do this, type in brew, space, install, space, dash, dash, cask, space, Zulu, at 17, press enter. Again, I've already got it. Now, what we need to do is get the location that's installed, because this hasn't properly installed yet. We still need to install it. Do brew, info, space dash dash cask space zulu at 17 and this will give us some information about it and we want to go to here where it has the location copy that the so right click copy you want to go to your finder right click go to folder paste it into there press enter and you probably won't have the rest you know like these grayed out the dot resources dot metadata because i've made my finder show hidden files and folders i'll show you how to do that soon because you we will need that but for now i'm actually going to disable it and you'll you'll have this you know jdk file the java development kit double click it as it's telling you to click continue and install you'll ask you for your password again this is the exact one that you we used previously this does not take long to install at all once that's done Whilst we still, we can close this down. Whilst we still have the browser open, we're going to download Android Studio. You go to the website, go to download, scroll down, click I have read. And from here, you have two choices Mac with Intel chip, Mac with Apple chip. To find out which one you have, you go to the Apple icon. In the top left about this mac and in the chip section if you say it's apple something you have the ch apple chip if you say it's intel something you have the intel chip really simple so click mac with apple chip at least that's what i'm clicking i'm going to cancel it because i've already downloaded it next we want to download vs code so again this is optional you can run your react native application from the terminal you can use some other editor some other ide if you want to VS Code is the one I recommend, and it is the industry standard. So, yeah, that's the one I recommend. So open it up, go to Download for Mac. You'll start downloading it. You don't need to select, oh, is it Intel or Apple? That just 
script handles all that itself. And now we can click close on this. Now what we're going to do, we'll minimize this because we'll need the terminal shortly. We need to go to our downloads and we need to, you won't have VS Code like this. So we'll install VS Code first. You double click the zip, it unzips it, drag the Visual Studio Code over to applications and just let go. I've already got it, you know, as you'll see like here, but, but you won't. Double click your Android Studio DMG and now just drag Android Studio onto develop and onto applications. And then once that's done, you're good to go. We can actually now launch up Android Studio. So we'll just search for Android Studio. If this is the first time that you are launching it up after installing it, you'll get a setter wizard. Close that setter wizard down. Reason being, if you've already got Android Studio set up and you're watching this video, you won't get that. So I'm gonna make this video in a way that it's applicable for everyone. You need to go to settings. So you can even go to Android Studio, settings, or go to, what's it called? Customize, all settings. You wanna go to languages and frameworks. Android SDK. From here in the SDK platforms, recommend they select the latest non preview and non privacy sandbox version, which is 34. You just click next to it and you'll have a tick and like a little download icon. We're not downloading and installing it yet. That will be very soon. Then we go to SDK tools. In there, you will get this sort of interface. Click show package details. In the Android SDK build tools, download the latest non-RC version. RC stands for release candidate. It's basically it's gearing up for release. It's still kind of in development mode. So they're still working out a few kinks most likely, but select the non-latest RC mode. NDK you can ignore. Select the latest Android SDK command line tools. CMake you can ignore. Select Android emulator. Android SDK platform tools, and that's it. You don't need anything else. So you'll have an apply button. Mine's gray there because I'm not downloading anything, but I'll show you what it would actually appear like. So if I select this, you would have a download icon there. So, the, so if you select all the uh, things that I've mentioned, you'll be able to install all of them. Click apply, click okay. It'll go through the process of downloading. For you, it's going to take a lot longer because you're downloading the SDK, you're, you're downloading the platform tools. That takes a bit of time, but just bear with it. Click OK, click OK. Now we need to set up our simulator and you can use a physical device as well. So you just connect it that's, and make sure it's in debug mode. But I will cover have a separate video covering that just so you're 100% you know, happy with how to you know set that up. Go to projects, more actions virtual device manager from here i'm going to delete this because i actually installed this or set it up earlier and what you want to do is click the plus button and if i increase the size of this here's all the different categories i remember when they were just phone back in the eclipse ide days but yeah you can even choose a fold phone so you can try and simulate that and see how that will you know work i'm just going to select medium phone click next and the image will be in other images. If not, just have a look, you know, through here and have a look through here. But I know it's over here. Select it. Click next. You can name it. Select up your select your startup orientation. Emulate your performance. Select like RAM, internal storage size. This can all be changed later. That's not a problem. Click. And now click run. So take about a minute or so, depending on how fast your computer is to run up i recommend doing this now getting it launched up so when we actually build our application it doesn't have to have an extra step of trying you know launching this and taking a bit of time as well this is almost done now now that's done i'm going to minimize it we can close this down we can close android studio down if we open up the terminal i'll we'll type in clear just so it makes it a little neater. And before we actually go in here, we need to open up our window. So right click, go to folder, and you wanna type in tilde forward slash dot. Uh, it's just four slash dot that you want. If it tries to you know, select something else, actually, sorry, 
it's just tilde forward slash, my bad. Do that, it'll take you to your user directory. You wanna open the .z profile file. It's not appearing because it's a hidden file. To show hidden files and folders, just press, whilst window is open, anywhere, I mean, Finder is open. Anywhere on Finder, you press on your keyboard at the same time in this order, Command, Shift, Full Stop, or Dot, or Period, whatever you wanna call it, and scroll down to dot z profile, right click, open with, text edit, and these are right at the end, you wanna add these three lines, export Android home, dollar home, library Android SDK, you wanna you know, put these three lines and then you're all good to go. So if I shut that down, now what we are gonna do is actually make those changes in effect. To do that, you type in source, tilde forward slash dot z profile. Mm, yep, and we can make sure it's actually worked by typing in echo space dollar Android home in all caps. And if it pumps out something like this, you're good to go. If not, make sure you know you ran the source command, make sure the file was saved, make sure it's all at the end of the file and you know it's it's in the correct format and this isn't you know you know incorrectly named if you have any issues just post in the comments down below and i'll help you out almost there now now we can create our react native application to do that first of all we're going to see you know change the directory that our terminal is pointing to to the desktop so cd space desktop with a capital d and that was an accident that i typed the rest of that so you should, yeah that's all you want cd desktop but it doesn't do that now because there isn't a directory called desktop in my desktop but yeah we're all good to go so ignore this this was by accident now we can create our application to do that you type in npx space create dash expo dash app at latest space now you name your application i'm going to put react application click enter if I go over here, you see the folder's been created. It's just downloading and installing the files for our React Native application. Probably take a you know two three minutes or so, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe quicker, and then we'll be good to go to launch it up and actually run the application in our simulator. So not long now. Okay, so now that's all done. You can actually type in CD React application and then just run it directly from your terminal. But we've got VS Code. It's a lot nicer and you can you know edit your code, see your code in there as well. So we can actually close this down. But we'll, we will be using this command momentarily. So we can close it down, close this down. Here's our Re React application. Open up VS Code. So I'm just gonna close it down fully. Let's search for code and click open. If some other windows pop up, because it's the first time, just you know, go for that process, click X. So open up your React application by selecting the folder, click open. Again, if in the bottom right, some little pop-ups appear, like toast, they're called toast notifications, appear like this, and they're talking about setting up and downloading and so on, so something to do with React. Just let that finish. I've already done, you know, installed it and set it up, so it doesn't do that for me. But if it does, just let that finish. Now we can run the application. Go to View, Terminal, and now you type in that npm run Android command. Press Enter. If I launch up the emulator, it'll launch it up momentarily. You'll actually detect the medium phone. There we go. If you have a phone, physical phone connected in the, you know, developer and debug mode and it's unlocked, you can you'll launch it up on there as well. So again, another reason I reckon this is a little tip, recommend having it launched up. If you have multiple simulators, the simulator that you've launched up might, I mean, that you want might not be the default one to launch it in. So if you have it launched up, 
it will launch it in that one. It will launch it in any simulator that's launched. So you can do a multi-launch as well. And that's it. There we go. I'll have a separate video covering all the bells and whistles of the structure of React Native applications. That's beyond the context of this video. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know any questions that you have regarding this or any other set of video down below in the description. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.